hope you're there and I hope you're warm and dry. It's amazing how quickly it all changed. It's certainly not November anymore. All that cold wind and snow. The winter came in with a bang and it reminded me of something I got wrong earlier in the year. Remember how I talked about what the farmer was doing in the field next to the school. It's next to my house as well. I can see it just over there. I talked about the farmer, what the farmer was doing at various stages in the year, how he ploughed his field and he harrowed it and drilled it and in the seed went and we celebrated harvest and we imagined by now he'd have brought his crop in. Well, it didn't happen. His crop is still there in the field. When he was planting it, he told me it was beans, but it doesn't look much like beans to me. He lives in Beanham. Perhaps he planted his beans in Beanham. That makes sense. But because he's so far away, we can't ask him what he's doing. What I suspect is that he's grown something that his cows will eat. I wonder whether one day soon we'll see cows in the field and that's the way he'll feed them through the winter. Doesn't look very nice. I hope the cows will like it. We'll see. But it's not that I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about a king, one who lived a thousand years before Jesus, and his name was David. We must start properly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A tiny light, a tiny prayer for all God's children everywhere. There are a lot of good stories in the Bible about King David, and we must make sure you hear them sometime. They looked back on his days as a kind of golden age. King David was the one who made their country great a thousand years ago, and his reign as king was hugely successful. But a few hundred years after he died, it had been invaded by wave after wave of enemies. It had all gone badly wrong. The king had been replaced with foreign emperors from outside. The moment the kings were done away with was particularly brutal, and I'm not going to talk about it now, but they described it as like cutting down a tree. This wonderful great tree had been destroyed, and all they were left with was a stump. Despite all this history that had gone so badly for them, the people of Israel did hope that one day they'd have a king again. Not just anyone. It wouldn't be someone elected like a president or a prime minister. It would have to be someone of the same family as David. Although David had lived a thousand years before, they still knew who belonged to which family. You may have come across something called a family tree. You can write on it your name and your parents' names and your grandparents and your great-grandparents. And in those days, they were able to go back as far as your great, 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 great grandparents. I know I've got that right because I was counting with my fingers under the table. They could go all that way back in the Jesse family tree. They knew the tree had been cut down, it was only a stump, but it was still alive, they reckoned, and a branch could grow out of it. 
That's enough explanation. I'm going to tell you a story about David, when he was born, in fact. Notice he was born in Bethlehem. Someone else was born in Bethlehem. I don't need to tell you who. So, Jesse was sitting under a spreading cedar tree in a field above his village. He was not an old man, but his life had been hard and difficult, and it was good to have some time by himself. His house in the village was full at the moment. His wife hadn't got out of her bed for three days, and all the women of the village were coming in and out to help her with food and bowls of water and medicines to strengthen her. He was glad that the neighbours were helping. Although his family had lived in the village for over 50 years, there were still many who remembered that they were newcomers. They hadn't lived there from the beginning like everyone else. But Jesse was happy to know at moments like this that people would help. His family were beginning to be accepted in the village. As he sat there, far above a stone dislodged itself from a crag at the top of the mountain that overlooked the village. It bounced from rock to rock, and for a moment it nearly stopped. But then it gathered speed again, bringing with it smaller stones and gravel. Jesse heard the commotion and looked up. By this time it had now become a small landslide. It would probably be all right, but just to be sure, Jesse took cover under a fig tree over on the other side. The landslide reached the scrub at the bottom of the mountain. It brought rich soil that was composed of rotted leaves and old bits of wood and bark. It slowed down when it reached the grass and the little trees, and it more or less petered out by the time it reached Jesse's feet. No danger there, Jesse thought and he sat for a few minutes in the sunshine, enjoying the smell of bread that wafted up from the village bakery. It was the biggest bakery in the region. Every day he sent his sons up there for bread for the family, and every day his sons Eliab and Abinadab, Shima and Nathaniel, Radai and Ozem. His sons would come back with their arms laden with good fresh loaves at the house of bread, Bethlehem was famous for. The smell made him feel hungry. Perhaps it was time to go home and see whether all those women coming and going had remembered that there were men to feed as well as Jesse's wife to look after. So he walked slowly down the village street and went in his front door. It was so much quieter than it had been when he left and his maidservant was standing just inside with excited happy eyes. He went into the big room, and there was his wife, propped up in her bed, holding her newborn child. As soon as they saw him, the women knew what to do, the same as they did when any child was born. They gently took the boy from his wife's arms and laid it on a cloth on the floor. Everyone turned to face Jesse. He felt so proud, a fine boy. He could see in everyone's eyes how pleased they were for him. He looked down at his family's newest member, lying there, waving his little arms and legs on the ground. All the women of the village standing around the edges of the room, waiting for him to do what, by tradition, he had to do next. A hush fell on the room. Every eye was on Jesse. The world stood still. Would he do it or wouldn't he? Ever so gently, ever so lovingly, he bent down, put his arms around his son, picked him up and lifted him high and said the words that everyone was waiting for, the words that every father had said throughout the whole history of the people and before. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Your name will be David, and
and your name will be remembered forever. A buzz of joyful murmuring, happy smiles all around the edges of the room and the people of the village melted away to leave Jesse and his family in peace. God had given his blessing of a son and the future was good. A few days later, a mouse made a home into the soft mound of earth that had been created by the landslide. In digging its burrow, the mouse uncovered a small stone and kicked it free, and in the process relieved an acorn from its burden. The rain came, and the acorn was happy. Let's remember that acorn, and they'll come back to him another time. So there we have the story of David being born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. Bethlehem's still there today and people visit it from all over the world to see where he was born and also the place where his great, 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 etc. grandson was laid in a manger by Mary and Joseph. So what can you take away from that story? I'd like you to remember how when a child was born, the father would pick the baby up and say, today I have become your father. That's the father acknowledging the child. Secondly, when you hear the carol once in Royal David's city, you'll remember that David was born in Bethlehem a thousand years before Jesus. David, who would become King David. Jesus too would become king and be recognised as a descendant of King David. But the third thing, I'm going to read you a passage from the prophecy of Isaiah in the Bible. It was written in the years halfway between David and Jesus when they were praying that one day they would have a king again. This is what Isaiah wrote. A stem shall come out from the stump of Jesse's tree. A branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. This branch that shall grow out of the stump of Jesse's tree will become a great king. In his days there will be peace. The wolf will lie down next to the lamb. The leopard will lie down next to the young goat, the calf and the lion together, and the little child will be able to lead them. The cow and the bear will graze together. Their young will lie down together and the lion will eat straw like a cow. No one will hurt or destroy anything. And the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There you have a vision of a time of peace brought in by the king who was a branch that grew out of the stump of the tree that had been cut down. When even the wild animals will be kind to each other. So, let us pray. Dear God, during this season of Advent, we wait patiently for the coming of Jesus, born as a baby at Christmas. As the people of Israel waited so long for a king to be born to them, a king who would bring back for them the golden age, the days of peace and hope, joy and love that they'd known under King David. In the same way, give us grace to enjoy lives of goodness and happiness in our own time, in our own place. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your company. I hope the rest of the day, the rest of the week, will go well for you. <laughs>